Discovering Alabama is a production of the Alabama Museum of Natural History. Coastal Sunrise, a timeless covenant between light and water, between water and earth, between earth and life. Here, where great oceans embrace fragile shorelines, we discover the origins of creation. Here we find the elements of vitality nurtured by the ebb and flow of the sea. Fresh streams and rivers bring nourishment from the highlands. Soils form among the richness. And the wind brings a breath of life across the very clay from which we ourselves took shape. Hi, I'm Doug Phillips, and I'm standing in one of the most richly life-nurturing places on planet Earth. I'm standing in Baldwin County, Alabama. More specifically, I'm in the upper reaches of the Weeks Bay watershed. The life-nurturing contributions of Weeks Bay were officially recognized in 1986, when parts of the bay gained a rare federal designation as a national estuarine reserve. It was about at that same time when we made our first official Discovering Alabama visit to the area. Today we're going to put the old canoe in the water and revisit some of our favorite spots. Of course, some of our favorite spots have changed a bit over the years, but hey, that's progress, or is it? Join me for a journey across the Weeks Bay watershed as we consider the life-nurturing values of our Alabama estuaries. Along the way, we'll ask the question, is this progress? And in what respects might it be something else altogether? This program is about a land unknown to many people, a land that in many ways has maintained its native natural wonders, a place of bountiful backcountry, forests, streams, and wildlife more diverse than can be found in much of the inhabited world. Come along with me as we explore the wild wonders of this land. Come along as we discover Alabama. Welcome to Discovering Alabama, and welcome to the Eastern Shore. That is, after all, what it says right here. You have to wonder, though, is this the eastern shore of Mobile Bay? Or is this the eastern shore of the Chesapeake Bay? Is this the upper reaches of Alabama's Fish River? Or the Cumberland River at Nashville, Tennessee? Are we on I-10 at Spanish Ford, Alabama? Or I-10 at Phoenix, Arizona? There's nothing here that says I'm in Alabama, but doesn't a new development, even if it looks just like any other development in any other part of the country, doesn't it still contribute to the local economy? Sure it does. Development contributes to the local economy in many ways that are yet to be realized. That timeless covenant between light and water, water and earth, earth and life, is being supplanted by a new covenant. A new covenant between asphalt and automobiles, subdivisions and strip malls. Under the old covenant, the miracle of creation spawned life in unique abundance and diversity across Alabama's coastal area. Under the New Covenant, the unique diversity may be hard to find, but the abundance, if you'll pardon the redundancy, there's plenty of abundance. The Old Covenant was built upon a delicate balance between the Earth and her inhabitants, and nowhere is that balance more delicate, more important, than in our estuaries. By the most simple definition, an estuary is where fresh waters meet seawaters. 
These brackish waters form a rich, nurturing home for young marine life that will eventually find its way to the oceans. Yes, a lot has changed since we were here back in the 1980s. Fortunately, many areas are just as magnificently beautiful as they ever were. This is Fish River, which runs right down through the heart of the Weeks Bay watershed. The Weeks Bay watershed covers about 200 square miles in Baldwin County. There are two magnificent coastal plain rivers that are the primary conduits for water seeking the bay. Fish River has its origins among springs and creeks up around Spanish Fort. It doesn't get large enough for a comfortable float until it gets down around Bohemian Park, four to five miles due west of Fairhope. Magnolia River is best known, not for its important role in the Weeks Bay watershed, but as that river where the U.S. mail is delivered by boat. As we slip under this Baldwin County Road Bridge, we're slipping into the Weeks Bay National Estuarine Reserve. The Weeks Bay National Estuarine Research Reserve is part of NOAA's National Estuarine Research Reserve System and is administered by the Alabama Department of Conservation and Natural Resources, State Lands Division. Weeks Bay Reserve was the 16th reserve in the system designated in 1986. Since that time, a lot of additions and changes and developments have taken place. Um, the Interpretive Center was built in 1992. We have an education coordinator provided by the Baldwin County Board of Education. We have a research program that incorporates different universities, so there's quite a bit of research going on here at Weeks Bay. In addition to being part of the National Estuarine Research Reserve System, Weeks Bay is included in EPA's Mobile Bay National Estuary Program Study Area. The National Estuary Program is patterned after the very successful Chesapeake Bay Program. And we're one of 28 national programs around our nation's uh, borders. We are designed to give local communities the tools necessary to restore and protect the national treasures that our estuaries represent. And that is one of the hardest issues facing us, or any environmental or conservation program, I think, anywhere in the United States, is connecting people to the resources that we want them to conserve or protect. That's why things like this here at uh, Weeks Bay, that's why uh, public access sites uh, are so important to, to helping to develop that. Thanks to a large body of scientific study, we now understand that our wetlands are important to us in many ways, environmentally and economically. Estuarine wetlands serve an especially vital role. Uh, brackish water, half salt, half fresh, creates a very special and unique habitat that's extremely productive. Um, uh, estuaries typically function as a nursery ground for um, small and juvenile marine organisms to go through their life cycle and develop. Um, extremely productive areas and uh, with respect to seafood but um, they help protect and buffer coastal areas from um, hazards such as hurricanes and storms and surges and floods. Um, also wetland habitats uh, associated with estuaries help to recharge and supply the groundwater and um, of course they provide habitat for many different species of birds and mammals and reptiles and amphibians. Very special places.
Our deeper understanding of coastal area wetlands and estuaries comes at a pivotal time. Historically, this part of Alabama has enjoyed lots of wildlands and wetlands intermingled with small farm and fishing communities, all tucked away from the crowding world. Not anymore. problems are exacerbated by high coastal population densities. 2003, we had in the United States 53% of the population living within 50 miles of the coast. The projection is for 2025 for 75% of the population to be living within that narrow coastal zone. That's 75% of the population in the United States on 17% of the land. We have to think in terms of reducing our environmental demands, our environmental footprints, the demands on the ecological system of this fragile area. There's a reason we say we're living on the edge. Everything that, that, uh, that's coming down the major rivers in Alabama, the Tom Bigby River, the Alabama River, the things that are happening in Georgia, the ha things that are happening in Alabama, and even in Mississippi, because it all drains right down through Mobile Bay. It's all connected. It's all a very complicated ecosystem. And uh, what one person does in the Cahaba River may actually have an effect down here. We are definitely seeing impacts from uh, development and all the problems that all coastal systems have in the U.S. Uh, we're not unique, we, we have those same problems. As you increase a stressor to a system, you don't see a straight line reaction to that, you see threshold reactions. And we've, we've got some data on Weeks Bay that shows us that we are rapidly nearing a major threshold. Loss of diversity, uh, increase in uh, physical problems such as flooding and, and things like that. and, and and we're rapidly nearing one of those thresholds. In a county that is so rapidly developing like Baldwin County is, um, the, uh, sometimes there's a perceived disregard for the, the, the kinds of resources that we here at the Weeks Bay Reserve are trying to protect. When we motor up river and we see people cutting down streamside vegetation to install some sort of sterile, uh, very human-made, uh, some kind of barrier to erosion and sediment control that could have been just as easily done with native vegetation and, or just leaving the existing vegetation. When you see people that, uh, that maybe fail to connect to the land here in Alabama, uh, I mean, I'm not a native Alabamian, but I have adopted it as my home, and I do try to try to treat Alabama like, uh, like I think uh, she should be treated. It's all very complicated, all very connected. There are things going on in Birmingham right now that will affect Alabama's coastal zones. Things going on in Gadsden, in Tuscaloosa, in Montgomery. It's easy to see that connectivity as we look at a map of the marvelous system of rivers that decorate our state. The marvelous system of rivers that make our state unique. But as we go about our hurried daily lives, can we comprehend the connection to that timeless covenant between light and water, between water and earth, between earth and life here in our fragile coastal estuaries? The environmental, economic, and educational importance of estuary ecosystems is the key message of the Weeks Bay National Estuarine Reserve. And with the accelerating kinds of change occurring in our coastal area today, this message takes on added urgency. In 2005, the State Lands Division of the Alabama Department of Conservation and Natural Resources invited the many groups with an interest in Weeks Bay to join together in a process of long-range planning to help prepare for the future of Weeks Bay. Discovering Alabama was honored to be asked to facilitate these meetings. Everybody through? The view? 
it wouldn't cost a dime and it might increase the protection. The simple issue that we have to transcend is greed. I think we're working against greed. And you can ultimately wind up with a situation where the reasons people have come here are no longer here. It's going to be business as usual until this is a high rise here and you have to pay five or probably $25 to come down here and look at the, at the bay. It would be easy to put all the blame on greedy local developers for devouring Alabama's natural wonders for personal gain, if only it were that simple. The issues faced here in coastal Alabama are no different from the issues faced across our state. How we choose to address these issues can be summed up in how we answer one simple question. What do we want Alabama to look like in the future? In 10 years, 20 years, 50 years, do we want a state that has maintained its unique natural heritage? And if the answer is yes, can we make a commitment to the kinds of comprehensive land use planning that will protect our natural wonders? If I didn't believe that, I wouldn't have this job. I really do believe that, that, uh, that the people, when they do get educated and when they do come together, that they can make a difference. And it's a matter of enough people caring. When people get fed up with it, and I'm not talking about, you know, a, an environmental group with 30 members, but when you get a whole, whole county demanding things be done, that's when you're going to see change. And if our legislators and re representatives won't do it, then we need to get people in there that will. You can't open your eyes and not see the growth and what it's doing to impact our area. And I really do believe that people now are starting to wake up and say, we need to be organized and we need to be helping. Because, you know, with the way that our Constitution's set up, the roadblocks put in front of us as far as getting laws passed and that type of thing, if we don't all, you know, work together as far as legislators, environmentalists, and businesses, it's not going to get done. People can do good if they get together and put their differences aside and want to come up with a common plan that has long-range positive impact. And we can do that today. We just need to decide to do it. I'm saying that, you know, 20 years Across the Weeks Bay watershed, across Alabama, people are coming together for the common good. But meanwhile, the clock is ticking. It could get downright discouraging, this escalating loss of natural beauty. And it would be discouraging if it were not for one thing. Alabama's outstanding natural wonders provide outstanding opportunities for education. And where there's education, there's hope. Think about what goes on on the land around our rivers and our bays. Now, when I say what goes on... Okay, guys. Now, we need to start talking about what kind of solutions. Yes, where there is education, there is hope. And right now, the Weeks Bay Reserve offers a wonderful opportunity to teach our children well. Well, typically we have around 30 to 40 students who come at a time. And I usually have some volunteers who help me with the programs. All of the activities that we do are correlated to the Alabama course of study in science for that particular grade level. So, for instance, if kindergartners come out here, they're going to do a couple of activities if they happen to come back um, in future years when they're in third or fourth grade, they'll do entirely different activities. Okay. They're pretty simple to use, but again, it takes technique. This is the um, float side. This is the lead line on the bottom. So you need to keep this end down when you're in the water at all times. And it all depends on how you operate the scene. It's not how far out you go with it or how long you pull it. It's your technique. <laughs> like a little um, immature mullet. 
little grass shrimp. Yeah, these don't get any larger than that. That's what soft shell crabs are, are crabs that have just molted and their exoskeleton has not hardened yet. So I'll pass this around and let you feel of it. It can't hurt you, but please be very gentle with it. We want to put it back in the water very quickly. And we'll put it back in over there where it'll have some place to hide so that hopefully it won't get eaten before it um, hardens back up. So occasionally I will run into those students and, and they will say things like, you know, in high school, I really didn't think I would use some of the stuff that, that you taught us, but lo and behold, okay. you know, we were talking one day and, and I knew this and it was because, you know, I had learned it in your so class. And that really makes you feel good. To after we get finished with the restoration area. In the end, we'll only save what we love. We'll only love what we understand. And we'll only understand what, what we're taught. We can educate our children to the value of this wonderful part of Alabama, but we cannot wait for our children to come to its rescue. The kinds of impacts that threaten this valuable ecosystem are going on right here, right now. Increasing pressure from population growth and the accompanying commercial and residential development could eventually disrupt the Weeks Bay ecosystem to such an extent that it no longer qualifies for federal support. But so what? What if we did lose that federal designation? There is some uh, federal dollars, uh, some significant federal funds that come along with that designation, but uh, I think you would actually lose something that has been developed over the last uh, seven or eight years in this community, and that is a sense of cohesion and partnership. It is kind of an umbrella that a lot of other organizations are working together under. And so I think that would be the greatest loss. You know, one thing I wanted to say before I was, we finished all this talk here was, you know, I fish over here on, on, on the river. I fish on Fish River. And I was out there the other day, and I looked over to my left along the shoreline there, and there's some bottomland hardwoods right there. Just down the way, there was a great blue heron. and he was trying to feed on some of those shiners and menhaden that were schooling along the bank. Then I was looking, you know, I looked up, and there was, a, there was an osprey. And earlier that day, I'd seen an alligator. And I was saying, hmm, this is, this, you know, I don't know where you're going to be when you die, but this, this is pretty close. Coastal Alabama, a timeless covenant between light and water, between water and earth, between earth and life. The bargain, the covenant, the testament between Alabama's estuaries and the birth of new life is older than we can imagine. But now there is a new covenant, a new testament, and we are part of the bargain. Today we share our infrastructure with nature's infrastructure. We delight in the bounty of nature. We find peace and comfort in our natural world. We link our dreams for the future with the natural heritage we hope to leave for our children.
Discovering Alabama is a production of the Alabama Museum of Natural History, the University of Alabama. This program is supported by grants from the Solon and Martha Dixon Foundation, the Alabama Wildlife Federation, working for wildlife since 1935, the Alabama Department of Conservation and Natural Resources, State Lands Division,